Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we've got space weather, seismicity, interest in a theory, pre-seismic signals, and a deep dive on a topic we've hit many times before, but with a twist that pushes the mind towards our explanation and away from the mainstream. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star where things were pretty quiet. Still no solar flares or filaments erupting towards the Earth, minor surges and pops around the limbs, while the coronal hole is turning through. We expect quiet to persist today, but we're closely monitoring the incoming sunspots. While big ones depart to the right, there is a developing group on the north incoming from the left. It's morphed a good bit in the last two days, so we're watching that one closely today. Meanwhile, NOAA has still not made any significant forecasts of the solar wind enhancement from this coronal hole. I expect it to arrive at Earth between tomorrow evening and Wednesday evening. Minor geomagnetic storm conditions from it. We've got eyes open. In earthquakes, the top shake of the day was an aftershock where the Alaska 7-pointer hit. Otherwise, the next 15 or so top quakes on the list is aftershocks from the Russian 7-pointer. Lots and lots of those, and hopefully the aftershocks release the remaining pressure and stay confined to those areas. Folks, NASA's Dr. Tony Phillips is plugging the alien spacecraft theory on his blog. While everyone is saying it's just a fun idea and likely not the real story, it's getting way more traction than when Avi Loeb said this the last time. Turns out astronomers are pretty much eyes open for any signal of a thrust or burn or something from the object to indicate it may be artificial. I find this peculiar. Excellent study up next showing various pre-earthquake electromagnetic anomalies before big quakes, this one looking at the big Myanmar event from a few months ago. While it is frustrating that these hundreds of studies have not resulted in a real-time early warning program for earthquakes just yet, the time to publication is getting shorter, becoming a more rapid identification. And throughout scientific history, that is the step that happens before a warning system comes, we can hope. Now, our top story. Folks, yet another confirmation that polar mesospheric summer echoes are increasing. We've seen that before and stand far apart from the mainstream on the topic. See, to make these echoes, you need ice particles, dust, turbulent mixing, and ionization of the air, electrification. Now, the mainstream likes to blame carbon dioxide for everything, and while they say it heats the surface, they say it cools the mesosphere, and so they say cooling up there could mean more ice, and that is one of the factors. So they think it's humans making more of these echoes. The problem with that, however, is that the temperature in the mesosphere is already about negative 80. All the water vapor is ice already. Meanwhile, there is extra dust coming from the galactic current sheet, more turbulence from space weather neutral wind amplification with a weaker magnetic field, which also lets in more cosmic ray ionization. That's three of the factors in one shot and all from the ongoing magnetic pole shift. In this new study, they hit that hard, even directly tying the appearance and character to electron density changes and geomagnetic disturbances, which ionize and impact turbulence. Folks, we had studies say this before, but now more confirmation is always good. The mesospheric echo enhancement seen over the last two decades is another sign of the magnetic disaster on Earth. Our book on this topic is in pre-order phase right now. Based on how many came in the first two days and what we can actually realistically handle, we're going to have to cut off pre-orders at the end of the month. It's everything on space weather, solar forcing of the atmosphere, earthquakes and biology, and everything about Earth's disaster cycle and the reset of that catastrophe about to happen in the next 25 years. Every pre-order will be signed and come with a PDF, an electronic copy emailed when the book ships out. And don't forget there's a a lot happening at Observer Ranch. Come out and see us in person. Really want to shake your hand. Gotta love meeting the observers. It's always like a family reunion. Check out ObserverRanch.com to see the event list, pick a time to come out, and book your stay at ObserverRanch.com. Link to that and to the book pre-order page is below. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.